In this video, we're going to look at how you construct a reagent table. And we're using the chemical reaction that we talked about in the last video, and that's represented here with the balanced equation that we finished up with last time. It's the reaction of nickel chloride with ethylene diamine and sodium hexafluorophosphate. The reagent table can be uh, constructed using the master file uh, that's in Excel that's on the course website and you can edit out all of the entries that you don't need leaving the reagents that you actually used. The quantities that we used are the values that are marked in red. You'll notice that one is in mils and the other two are in grams. The volume is uh, often the choice of unit for measurement of liquids um, and the advantage is that with the toxic liquid, you can then dispense in a fume hood easily using volume. But it's not that uncommon for organic liquids to also be weighed out onto a balance to get that extra little bit of accuracy that you can see with uh, using a three decimal place balance. Having used the volume, we do need to actually convert into a mass. Uh, to proceed with the calculation. And so we need to look up the density, 0.899 grams per mil. And you'll recall that density is uh, mass over volume. And so if we multiply the density times the, sorry, the volume, we will get a mass. And if we do 0 0.90 times 0.8, uh, 0.8, uh, 899 we have a value of 0.81 grams. The next column is the uh, calculated number of moles. And in fact it's in millimoles. Notice that extra M there. Now moles is calculated by the mass divided by the molecular weight. And to get to millimoles, we multiply by 1000. So in this case, the number of moles of ethylene diamine is 0.81 divided by the molecular weight of 60.10 times 1000, and that gives us 13 millimoles. For the nickel chloride, 1.013 divided by 237.69 and you notice that that molecular weight actually includes the six waters that are included in the crystal because you've actually weighed out those six waters as well and that value comes out to be 4.262 and the sodium hexafluorophosphate same calculation 8.324 now we can look at the number of equivalents, which we couldn't do until we had completed that column. What we do is look through the column and find the smallest value, which in this case is going to be for the nickel chloride, 4.262, and we will call that 1. And now we need to find the ratio, knowing that this value is equivalent to 1, what would this value be? And so the number of equivalents, sorry, of uh, the ethylene diamine is going to be 13 divided by 4.262 uh, and that equals uh, 3.2 equivalents. So we'll just complete that table there. And the value for the sodium hexafluorophosphate comes out to be 1.95 equivalents. <clears throat> now the these values, the number of equivalents, should relate to the coefficients that we see in the balanced equation. Remember that the nickel chloride actually has a 1 that's been understood in front of it. Uh, we don't write it in, but it's there anyway. And so you can see that there's a 1 to 3 to 2 ratio. So 1 to 3 to 2 ratio expected in the balanced equation and so we would uh, see the same comparison of 1 to 3 to 
2. But this value is a little bit more than 3. That means we have some excess ethylene diamine. But this value is a little bit less than 2, so we don't have quite enough sodium hexafluorophosphate, which means that this becomes the limiting reagent. That is, when all of the sodium hexafluorophosphate is being used up, that uh, the reaction will stop. Limiting reagent is often termed LR. And that will help us define the expected yield when we come to do that calculation in the next video.